What's up? Can you what? Right now? You need? I will look. What kind? Just regular pop. I I know I have ginger ale. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Okay, I I'm going to try that again because I only heard just one voice. <laughs> and there's more than one person here. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Good, excellent. Uh, very good. It is great to be able to join together in worship this morning. Um, as we come together, there are a few announcements. Um, one is that we are, we'll be collecting for the uh, Arthur Food Bank, so if you'd like to uh, bring uh, non-perishable food items, we have the uh, containers at the front door to be filled. Um, also, there's, re I haven't heard any different. There is still practice for the cantata today. Um, that's at 2 o'clock at Grace Anglican Church. Uh, this Friday, uh, St. Andrews and Arthur will be hosting a ham and scalp potato supper and bake sale. It's doors open at 5 o'clock. And uh, the information is there for um, adults, uh, $17. Uh, students under 12, $7. And preschoolers are free. Don't you all wish you were in preschool right now? Uh, bakers are required for our bake table for the ham skull potato dinner. Um, if you could donate squares, cookies, tarts, or any baked goods, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, baking can be dropped off at the church anytime before 3 p.m. on the 25th. Knox Con's annual nativity display is happening um, up at uh, Knox Con Presbyterian Church, uh, 8015 Highway 89 in Con. And Friday, December 2nd, uh, 5 to 8. Saturday, December 3rd, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Sunday, December 4th, 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, donations only. And I think if anyone wanted to help out, they would be more than welcome to go and help. Um, and Saturday, November 26th, uh, at 11.30 to 1.30, the Arthur United Women's uh, Point Santa Luncheon and Bazaar is happening. Uh, the information is there. And Tuesday, December 6th, uh, ladies' Christmas dinner. Uh, the sign-up sheet is just outside uh, the sanctuary doors um, on the table. So if you're interested in coming to that, uh, the sit-down time is 6.30 p.m. The cost is $20. Uh, it's catered by Linda Saunders, and there is a um, uh, service following, I believe. Uh, the sign-up deadline is Sunday, November 27th. Kathy will be collecting your money prior to December 6th. But Kathy's not here today. No Kathy. And no Laird, no. Alrighty, as we take attendance. <laughs> so those are the announcements. I invite us to join together for a responsive call to worship, which comes from Psalm number 46. And I'd like to invite Lauren to come forward and to read the psalm for us. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swells. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning draws. The nations rage, the kings totter. God's voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the, the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. I invite us to uh, stand and sing uh, King of Kings, followed by Soon and Very Soon. Please stand.
Please be seated. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we come before you this day. We come knowing that you are sovereign, that you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And Lord, as we come into your holy presence, as we come in the name of Jesus Christ, who has reconciled us, who has redeemed us, who leads us into new life, who surrounds us with his unending love, with his grace and his mercy. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the grace that you have shown us, for the hope that you have filled us with. Lord, as we come today, as we come knowing that you are holy, that you are gracious, we come confessing our sins, confessing the anger that we have felt towards others, expressing the greed where we have allowed to seep into our hearts, where we have sought blessing for ourselves and curses for others. Lord, we confess our pride that we think that we are better than others. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, that we do not see the fullness of your grace each and every day. Forgive us that we turn away from your love and your mercy and the mercy that you show others. Forgive us that we are like Jonah. We want the destruction of others and don't understand your forgiveness of even ourselves. Lord, have mercy on us. Wash our sins away that we might live in the fullness of your grace, that we might walk with the one who loves us and cares for us each and every day. Lord, we thank you for the grace and the mercy that you show us through Jesus Christ, through the hope that you have given us, through the mercy that has changed our very lives. We pray this all in Jesus Christ's name. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our mission moment this morning comes from uh, MMI, or Medical Ministries International. And this is one of the pictures that was actually shared on Facebook a few, few, uh, actually last week, I believe. And the message was, it's actually from Ecuador, so it holds a special place in my heart because I've been there a number of times. So when I see things from Ecuador, I like to continue to share them. Just a second. It's always interesting when you go on Facebook to get what you're trying to find and you get the service that you're preaching right now. Alrighty. This is from uh, uh, Katrina, is it? Katrina. I was blessed to participate in an amazing uh, project organized by Medical Ministry International in Catacachi, Ecuador. Now, I have to admit, I actually don't know where that is. Whereabouts is that? Okay. The south end? Okay. 
Uh, our team provided medical help to 479 adults and 289 children. 92 decisions of faith were made during, the, during this period. Uh, we'll never forget the spirit and atmosphere of the project. Unbelievable people with big, no huge hearts. Dear God, I am very grateful you made me believe in this world again. And it's interesting because sometimes we think of going on trips like these um, about giving, and yet many times uh, it's heard over and over again how God works in our own hearts when we step out in faith. So let us remember uh, the different, different projects that are happening through Medical Ministry International. You can, uh, they post frequently on Facebook, and you can also go to their uh, website, mmi.org. Um, and find uh, multiple updates and what's going on and ways to help out and support the uh, ministry that is going on around the world. Let us continue to worship God, uh, singing, uh, He is Lord, followed Lamb by God. Lamb of God. Please stand.
Alrighty. So it's time for our Sunday school time and time to get our uh, powers of observation, our critical thinking, our brain kicked into gear and see what we can figure out as we play. You know, you usually expect to hear something when I hear that. These things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. Okay, so remember it's never about the color. And for once, the first thing is actually completely different colors. So, what is different? We've got D. We've got C. Any guesses? Any other guesses? So we got D and C. Who wants to go for C? D. Who wants to go for D? <laughs> D? So that'd be my guess. All the others stick things together. Alrighty. The next one. Hmm. You want to go with C? Why C? It has different colors. Well, that's kind of an interesting one. I heard D too. Why D? Any ideas? Hmm. A isn't sweet enough? Alrighty. A. Okay. All the others are sweet. Very nicely done. Okay, so we've got different, well, it looks like blocks. Who remembers playing with all these blocks? Who misses playing with those blocks? You like all the colors? Okay, so which ones do you think is different? B. E? Why B? Plastic. It's plastic. What else? I was thinking B because they're the ones that kind of lock together. All the others are made of wood. All right. There's about the material. Okay. So number four. Ooh. These are interesting. D? Why D? Pardon? Not from nature. Yes. Why A? Because it's lots of leaves. Now, what is C? Does anybody know what C is? Okay. So A because it's the only one used a rake for. Alrighty. Let's see what the answer is. Hey, all the other ones make a letter of Okay. It's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? Okay, number five. We have a balloon. We have a clarinet, I'm guessing. A keyboard. And a saxophone. Now this one could go one of two ways. A balloon. Who here? You can play the balloon though. <laughs> it's not gonna. See, we have because it's the only one with two colors, and I'm guessing. 
Okay. Good to all the others. All righty. You were so close. I said one of two things. All righty. Owen, can I get your help for something? Come on up. his word. Now, is that a good thing? Yes. Yes. It, can it be a scary thing, too? Sometimes. Sometimes. All righty. Why don't you guys go sit down so we can see the video for today. For the last while in the Big God story, we've been hearing about the hero kings of Israel, David and Solomon, and the amazing things that happened when they trusted God. They remembered God's promises to be faithful to them when they remembered Him. And they also remembered God's warnings about what would happen if they stopped being faithful to Him. Being a king was an important job, and it was their job to make sure that the people were always grounded in God. Sadly, not all of Israel's kings took this job as seriously. <laughs> Some thought being a king was about just having fun. <laughs> Other kings were angry that they had to they follow God's rules and thought things would be better if they could just do whatever they, they wanted or follow the example of other countries that didn't know God. As you might imagine, with those kinds of kings, things did not go well. And God was concerned. So he sent messengers, prophets, to remind the people of what would happen if they kept going down this path. Unfortunately, the people didn't remember those warnings. They laughed at God's prophets. They mocked them and did not change their ways. Things went on like this for quite some time until God could take no more. God allowed a king named Nebuchadnezzar to rise up against his people. He brought his armies and they attacked. Into God's cities they went and they smashed all they could find. Down came the mighty walls protecting the cities and they set fire to the temple. armies left with any treasure they could carry, including God's people. They were not free anymore. They were back to being slaves, taken away from their home to the land of Babylon. It broke God's heart to see the home that he had given his people smashed, broken, and burned. But God's people left him no choice. God always keeps his word, and God told them what would happen. The people only wanted to remember God's good promises, to be there for them, to bless them, to give them a future. But they forgot all about his promises of what would happen when they didn't follow him. God always keeps his word. It's always interesting when you hear a rumbling. And you're trying to figure out where the rumbling's coming from. Uh, is as we are on what's called uh, Reign of Christ Sunday or Christ the King Sunday, we remember that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. We remember of all the blessings that he's given, but also we remember all of, all of his word. That there are times when 
He lets us know exactly what will happen when we, are, when we are obedient, when we listen. But he also lets us know what happens when we aren't obedient. And we remember that God keeps his word. And sometimes we really like it. Sometimes we struggle with it. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you always keep your word. We thank you that you love us, that you help us, that you're with us each and every day. We thank you that you guide us with your word and with your Holy Spirit. Help us to be obedient and to follow your word each and every day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Have fun downstairs. Let us come before the Lord in prayer once again. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you. We thank you for the beauty that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the sun that is shining and for the snow that is glistening. We thank you, Lord, for the reminder that even though we have sinned against you, you can make us white as snow, that you can make us pure and holy, that you can redeem us that none of us are too far gone, too corrupt, too lost. But Lord, you can speak into each of our lives to remind us to come and follow you, to turn our lives, our hearts, and our minds from the things of, of this world that weigh us down, that lead us down paths of destruction and hurt and pain. Lord, as we come in to your holy presence, we lift up to you the many people in our lives that are struggling this morning. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving the death of loved ones. Lord, we pray for your eternal comfort, for your peace to surround them, for your love to fill them. And during these times of remembering, this time of grieving, Lord, we pray for those who are living with the realities of cancer, of chronic sicknesses, of heart problems, that are living with mental illness, the hurt and pain of broken relationships, of the love that we have for children, for brothers and sisters, for family members, and yet we wonder if that love is returned. Lord, we pray for your help. We pray for your healing of heart, of mind, of body, and of soul. We pray, Lord, that you would grant us your peace, fill us with your understanding and hope, that we would not succumb to despair, that we would not be lost in the darkness of the hurt that seems to be so prevalent in our world. Lord, we pray for those, those many people, countries that are affected by, by war, by famine, by natural disasters, by greed. Lord, times we struggle to even comprehend how other, other people, people like, that look like us, people that are completely different than us, could hurt each other to such degree, that we look down on others with such vehement hate. Forgive us, Lord. And help us truly live brothers and sisters created in your image 
Help us to share the blessing that you have, have given to us. Help us to live in the fullness of community that you call us to, that you empower us to live in. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, we pray that you'd guide us in the reading of your word. Help us to not shy away from the, from the tough parts of your word, and the realities that we might face in our own lives when we do not listen and we do not obey. Let us also remember the fullness of your grace, that you are patient, that you do not want to see any of us perish, so that we would all turn to you to know the fullness of your love and your grace, to know the fullness of your eternal life. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Lauren back up for uh, the scripture readings uh, from Luke chapter 23, 33 to 43, and from Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 15 to 21. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, they, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by, watching. But the ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is Christ of God, his chosen one, the, so okay. the soldiers also mocked him, coming up, and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed justly for we are receiving the due rewards of our deeds but this man has done nothing wrong and he says Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and he said to him truly I say to you today you will be with me in paradise second chronicles 36 15 to 21 the Lord of God's our fathers sent presently to them by his messengers because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place but they kept mocking the messengers of God despising his words and scoffing at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people until there was no redeeming Therefore he brought up against them the king of Chaldeans, who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin, old man or aged. He gave them all to his hand, and all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his princess. All these had brought to Babylon, and they burned the house of God and broke down the walls of Jerusalem and burned all its places with fire and destroyed all its precious vessels. He took into ex exile in Babylon those who had escaped from the sword, and they became servants to him and to his sons until the establishment of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had in, enjoyed its Sabbath. All the days that it lay desolate, it kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. Thank you very much, Lord. As we think about the faithful word of Jesus and we are confronted 
with um, Jesus fulfilling the, his, his word, as we, we look at connecting last week to this week, Solomon was pray to God and, and ask God's blessing on the temple itself. Ask that the temple would be a, a sign for the people that even if they were in far off lands, they could pray t- towards the temple and know that God was hearing them. When we think about that, we think of the blessings, we, too often we, we focus solely on the blessings of God because the blessings of God, let's be honest, they make us feel good. We are encouraged by them. When we think of God being faithful, do we also, when we think of God's, God being faithful to his word, do we also remember those parts of his word that challenge us? Because when he mentioned last week the blessings uh, for, for the temple, for God speaking to, to Solomon, that if you are faithful, if you are obedient, I will honor the promise that I gave to your father David that there would always be a descendant on the throne of Israel. But, and here's the thing, we we, we really struggle with the buts. Do we only hear the first part of it? Because there is that but that gets in the way. That but that we, we struggle with because that but brings in the possibility that if we are disobedient, we won't see God's blessings. We'll see the removal of God's blessings. We'll see the removal of God's protection. We'll see the removal of God's faithfulness. And we'll enter in with time that many people see as a curse. So when we think about God in being sovereign and God fulfilling his blessings, do we also believe that God is going to fulfill his faithful word, even if we don't want to hear it, even if we struggle with it, even if we uh, think that th- God would never do something like this, even though he said he would do something like this. See, God, is being, fa- God being faithful is not dependent on what we think is right. This is an interesting thing. How many times do we try to put God in our box with what we want, that he will do what we want, even when we pray? Sometimes we are praying, trying to uh, tell God what to do. Instead of asking, instead of seeking his will, instead of inviting him to help us change our direction, we want to change God's direction. But you see, God is faithful even when we don't like it. And this is a problem. This is a problem that we have to deal with within ourselves because sometimes when God is being faithful, it is showing that we haven't been. That we, as a people, have turned away, that we haven't been obedient, that we haven't fulfilled our part of the covenant. Because we we recognize the, the parts when God says, This is the new covenant for you. You see, covenant, sometimes we focus on his part. We focus on what he says he's going to do. But many times we struggle and we want, God, if you just tell us what we need to do. Well, he has. It's just we don't usually like to read that part of it. Because that becomes tougher for us. We like God's gift of salvation and freedom and forgiveness, but he's also called us in to obedience. He's also called us to be, to repent, to turn back and turn towards himself. See, in that repentance, it's one of the things we struggle with because it means that we have to turn our direction, we have to change our direction, we have to change where we are pointing ourselves, not to where God is pointing himself. And this is a problem that we face. We struggle with it because we get so self-focused and so self-indulgent. When we are faced with the injustices caused by those we are like and care about, 
we struggle to acknowledge God's love for all of his people, not just us. See, this is where we, we get into a problem because when we are self-focused and we do something wrong, we just want to be blessed. We don't want to be corrected. Discipline, when we think of the word discipline, there's many different images that come to mind, but discipline is to try to bring us into line with God, not as a punishment, but to bring into a right relationship, to be able to be in relationship. And this is somewhere we, we struggle with. When we see the injustices of the world and we say, God, why don't you do something about it? And yet, sometimes we are the ones empowering those injustices. Are we willing to do something about it ourselves? Are we willing to follow Christ and move towards Christ instead of moving towards our self-image of what we would like? Are we willing to acknowledge our own sinfulness and our need for God's redemption? And this is where the people of, of Israel and of Judah, when they are faced with the, the deportation to Babylon, everything was going great, so they thought, except for those pesky people that kept telling them to turn back to God. prophets during different points of time, it was an interesting calling because many people did not want to actually have to go against some of the kings there because like Elijah having to face Ahab and Jezebel, his life was in danger because he spoke against them. He spoke against the whole nation. He caused a, he, he, he spoke that God's judgment was to cause a famine, and he said this, and then there was a, a drought for three years, and Ahab and Jezebel were not happy with Elijah. Over and over again, you have examples of prophets speaking to the king, and the king getting mad. Why don't you tell me something I want to hear? Isn't that interesting? That a prophet of God supposed to bow to the will of the king. And this is one of the interesting things when we think about the role, the prophetic role of the church. Are we supposed to speak? How are we supposed to speak into our society, into our current situation? And this is where in the last few years has become uh, very interesting. Um, because you've seen both ends of the spectrum. How are we being faithful to God and what we say and what we do? And this is where we have to tr really be humble and listen to the Lord, to be people of prayer and people of action. Because we are seeking the will of God, not our own will. We are seeking the will of God to glorify God, not to glorify ourselves. And this is where we get into uh, a great argument because we start seeing what we want to see in ourselves? Are we really seeking the will of God? Are we really, really humbly following God in all that we do? Greg Rochelle uh, gave this quote from uh, the Christian atheist, uh, believing in God but living as if he doesn't exist. If God has done what you think he should do, trust See, we all like this one. We all like the fact that if God does what I think he should do, he's on the right page, right? You should trust him. If God doesn't do what you think he should do, trust him. See, this is where people get a little bit frustrated because God's not on the right page, obviously. 
right? Or maybe we're not. If you pray and believe God for a miracle and he does it, trust him. If your worst nightmare comes true, believe he is sovereign, believe he is good. It doesn't say like what happened. It doesn't say that. People would put that in there, but it doesn't say that. It says believe that he is sovereign even when things happen in our world and in our lives that we don't like. Because here's the reality. If things happen that we don't like, maybe there's things that need to be changed, not just in ourselves, in our world around us. When we are following God and we are, are, are recognizing the problems that are, are facing the world around us and we start to act to help to bring justice, help to help others to be the people of God, to be the hands and feet of God, we are being obedient to God, we are following God's word, we are following God's empowerment through his Holy Spirit, and we are living as the people that God has called us to be. It's not about God being on the right page, it is whether we are willing to be on the right page with God, or if we are willing to trust God even when there's a snowstorm in our lives, and we've got some place to be, and God's, and you know it's a bad idea to go out. But what do you do? Do you trust God? That if you don't show up, it's going to be okay? Yeah. There are times when God calls you out into that snowstorm. That's true. There are times when God sends you the snowstorm to keep you put. That's true. Are we willing to listen and seek discernment? This is the problem that the people of Israel, the people of Judah, were facing. They did what they wanted, when they wanted. They wanted God's blessing. They wanted to worship other gods. They wanted to go their own way. They wanted to be their own gods, to be the master of their own lives. This happened a good 2,500 years ago. More than that in some cases. But I, what I just said could be applied to people today. Because we still struggle to trust God. We still struggle to be obedient to God. We still struggle to accept God's blessings and recognize that we have a role to play in this also. In the face of the horrors of human sinfulness, we will also come face to face with the faithfulness of God's love and eternal grace. See, when we read through this passage from 2 Chronicles, we are confronted with, yes, the destruction of God's temple, of Jerusalem, of the exile of people. But here's the thing, and this is one thing that we miss in the Old Testament many times. Too often we hear about the death and destruction, the wars. Why were those necessary? Some of us would say none of them were necessary. But was there injustice? Was there cruelty? Was there evil? The unfortunate answer is yes. Is God keeping his word by addressing the injustices in the world when we don't like what happens and the result? Because sometimes we are on the side where there are great injustices being caused. And we struggle to be confronted with the reality of our own place in the world. But you see, when God acts, and there's times when, we, when he acts and we don't like it, it's changing someone else's life also. And they're recognizing his grace in it. They're recognizing the hope that he has in that same action. They are recognizing 
that they too are loved? Will we recognize that we are not islands unto ourselves, that it's not all about our comfort and our peace, but it is about God's kingdom of grace and love and that invitation for all people to have a place where they can be known and, and know the love of God. See, even in the death and destruction that, we, that, that people struggle with in the Old Testament, God is at work for his love and grace to be felt, to be experienced, to be shared. He hasn't forgotten about the injustices caused by many people. And even when the armies that were empowered to go against Israel once they overstepped their bounds. And you see a common theme. And as it said in the video, they were once again slaves. When you get that freedom to have power, will you give God the credit or will you take it for your own? Will you trust God with what he has empowered you to do and listen to God's limits and be obedient to God? Or will you take it that extra step away from God, beyond where God is calling you, being disobedient and creating the injustices that you are empowered to stop? God is continually at work in our obedience, in our disobedience. John Newton says this, when we have been brought very low and helped, sorely wounded and healed, cast down and raised again, have given up all hope and been suddenly snatched from danger and placed in safety, and when these things have been repeated to us and in us a thousand times over, I find this interesting. A thousand times over, we begin, we begin to learn to trust simply to the word and power of God beyond and against appearances. See, too often we look at what's happening and we see the appearance of what's happening and we think to ourselves, I don't like this, or this isn't what I signed up for, or this is exactly what I want, but we take it for granted. When we get beyond the way things look, when we get beyond the appearances of what's happening around us, even our own appearance and our own societal placement, we simply learn to trust the word and power of God beyond and against everything that we see and know. We trust that he is at work. We start to live by faith, even when it's uncomfortable, when we know the sovereignty of God, even when we are confronted with our own, our own sinfulness and we bow down and we admit, like Isaiah admitted, I am a man of unclean lips, from a people of unclean lips, and we allow God to move in that moment, that moment of humility, that moment of grace, that moment of healing. When we recognize that even the things that trouble us the most come to an end, but God's grace lives on beyond us. And we can truly walk by faith. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to not be held captive by our emotions of the moment, but to trust in you, to trust in your sovereignty, to trust in your word, not just in the words that comfort us, but also the words that remind us that we are part of of a covenant that we too have a responsibility in this covenant to listen, to live out your loving and gracious and faithful word. 
in every part of our lives, in every situation. Lord, help us to be faithful to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I invite us to pass the offering plate around. It's going to be very quick today. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, it is from your abundance, from your grace, from your love that you have given to us. Lord, we pray that as we give these tithes and these offerings and the works of service this week, that you would bless them and use them to share the good news of your faithfulness, of your love for all of your people, your good news that you have given through Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us to join together as we sing, Jesus, lover of my soul.
let us let us go in the name of Jesus Christ to serve him to live for him to be obedient to his word that gives life that showers us with his unending love that encourages us with his grace may we share that blessing with all those we meet may we go in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit in Jesus Christ's name amen Go in love and have no fear. God will guide you. He is always near. Go in love. Take his hand. God will Please be seated. It has been great to be able to join with worship uh, with each of you that are here and those watching online. May God's blessing go with you this day and guide you each and every day. Until we meet again, my friends, be at peace with God, with each other, and with yourselves. Amen.